All right, like I said off the top, uh, we're doing things a little differently this episode. And of course, uh, this would happen to be the one and only time that Lund isn't here. And we don't do a pre-recorded interview uh, for this one, but we're doing it in real time uh, because our interviewee is here anyways and not on any particular schedule, uh, probably. So that means there won't be any confusion as to what tense we're speaking in. Uh, but we have uh, Ryan Cooley here. This guy's basically been a ghost for the last couple of years, <laughs> uh, along with Riley not only built communal creative studios, but offered us uh, space and resources to take our podcast to the next level, uh, which is still really not that high, but it's a, a, a higher level than we could have uh, taken a lot of stress off of me. Uh, he's been out doing a million different things, uh, just basically being a cool guy, doing cool guy shit. And again, uh, Ryan, uh, sound tech extraordinaire for Bose Bar and Stage, plus a whole lot of other things we're going to talk about here in this interview. But uh, thanks for doing this, Ryan. I hope you're enjoying uh, being back here with us, which probably feels like the same old crap, except with a couple people you don't even really know. It's good to be back. <laughs> yes. It's good to have, uh, it's good to be back with you guys in the room. This has kind of been boring in here. There's not a ton of stuff going on in here. So, Well, I mean, I'm glad we can make things a little less boring. Like I said, uh, it's been over two years since you've been able to be here for a recording, basically since before we ended the podcast the first time. Uh, so the athlete here, a new a new face for you. But I guess tell us a little bit about what you've been doing because you're, uh, yeah, you've been, been doing some pretty exciting stuff. Yeah, so I got the opportunity to go out on the road with uh, Matt Good. Uh, I work for him basically more or less full-time um we've done two cross canada tours so far this year and uh just about to leave to wrap up the last four shows here in a, in a week back into bc so and and that's on top of two are you are you still playing with one bad son or just like playing in general yeah we didn't do a ton of shows this year everybody's off kind of doing their own stuff uh, shane is a comic book artist and he wrote and drew his uh, own comic book this year. So he's busy getting that out into the world. It's called Prairie Gods. Wow. Um, you're pretty standard, like uh, Western vibe stuff. Yeah, Sask guy. Right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So he's been off doing that. But uh, we're going uh, out on the road in December. Uh, just a little Western Canada thing to uh, promote the EP we just released. And uh, yeah, that's about it. I've been recording some records in, in this room when I'm at home. And uh yeah, trying to stay as busy as humanly possible. Yeah, I know. I came in. You're in there just playing like some baby making music. Oh, yeah. Or maybe once uh, once you <laughs> we let you go from this interview, we just can uh, play some background music for us. But uh, tell us a little more about being on the road with Matt Good, obviously a, a Canadian music legend. And, uh, you know, for a guy, you've been a, a sound tech for I don't know how long. So really like probably something you've been aspiring to. Yeah, it's it's really cool to be kind of on the other side of the fence now. Like I, I've been a house tech at Bose for a long time. So it's been it's uh, it's been really cool to be able to like, I'm the guy that uh, greets everybody when they get to the venue and now I get to be on the road and, and be the guy that gets greeted. You know what I mean? So it's uh, it's been, it's, where do I even start? It's been crazy. We've done probably 50 or 60 shows this year wow. together um, all over the place, just in Canada so far. But uh, Matt's been great. Um, it's the first time really him touring with a band again since the Matthew Good Band days. So uh, he's been doing solo stuff now. He's back out on the road with the full band. And it's just wild to be able to mix some of those old songs that we all kind of know from the early 2000s and, and whatever else. But yeah, it's been wild. We've been in buses and everything else. It's been good. So how does one get into being a sound tech? What's, what's the inspiration behind how you uh, got into that? Uh, uh, <laughs> I dealt, so I played in a band for a long time. Um, I dealt with like quite a few, like I played in a punk band that toured Canada quite a bit. We dealt with a lot of like pretty crusty old sound guys that weren't kind of very in it. So I decided when I was younger, I was like, you know, I think that's, uh, I could have, there's an angle there, you know, I, mm. I kind of think I could be good at that. So that's kind of where it started. I was doing shows out at the multiplex in Springbrook. That's kind of where it started. Uh -huh. And that was just like a big old playground. Riley was out there with me as well. Uh, we had like a prototype version of what we have here out there. And it was pretty terrible. It was a pretty old building and, and uh, just like got ideas out. Um, but that was the first place I started doing sound and I had a big old theater to myself to kind of learn and do stuff. And then shortly after that, I got my job at Bose. I've been there for... I guess next July will be 10 years. I mixed my first show there 10 years ago in July. Wow. So it's 
I have no idea where the years have gone, but uh, <laughs> it's been an absolute ride the whole time. Um, but I learned a lot from just like the guys that come in from the bigger bands, you know, steal a little piece of information from everybody and kind of just, you know, learn it as you go type of thing and stay as involved as you can. But yeah, that's kind of what started. Do you actually know what all those switches on the boards do? Like there's like 6,000 switches. I do. do you know? Yeah. They're a little less complicated looking nowadays, but uh, everything's like the, the console I have when I'm out with Matt is basically just like a computer. Like it's, it's, it runs windows in the background and it's, uh, it's a little less, uh, um, slidey. Yeah. yeah there, that's the word I'm looking yeah. for. Yeah, yeah. Are you playing like solitaire too on, on there? With, no, on, like, un uh, unfortunately yeah. not. No, no, but, uh, Yes, I do. Yeah. At this point now in my in my <laughs> career, I do know what all the buttons do. Can't say that uh, for when I started. But. Yeah, it's insane though. Even like I saw you yesterday, uh, you were back at Bo's doing sound for a, a show there, like a, the the bridal show. So probably a big, big, exciting one for you. But even look at like you hit one button and the sliders like they're like pre programmed. <laughs> oh yeah, stuff is very intimidating to, to yeah, see you do all that. It's like anything. It's you know. It's not as complicated as it looks, to be honest. But it's cool gear. I get to play on cool gear all it's, the time. It's a little so. complicated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it weird now being back at Bose too? Because you're on the, the road so much. And I know we've had that, all, yeah. like Ethan come in too and do a, you know, I used to work with you on all the, the events that I emceed and now it's Ethan. But, yeah. Uh, Ethan's been crushing it, honestly. Uh, it'd be pretty different if you just coming back and just doing like a, I don't want to say a regular old Bose show, but uh, especially when I, it's like a bridal show or something, a little different. Oh, uh, yeah. I still love all the events that Bose does. Like that place is still just always thinking outside the box. So I love, you know, decorating the room up and doing cool, you know, events like that. So it's, uh, it keeps me grounded, you know, I get to go out and be spoiled on the road uh, in all, uh, in all ways of the word and come home and, and have to put in a real day's work again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when you go on the road, um, do you have all the equipment with you? Like, do you bring that in or does each venue kind of have their own stuff that it they kind of depends? Like we're, we're a bigger entity with Matt. So we, uh, rent a full package before we leave. So we got a couple, couple consoles, one for, uh, monitors for on stage, one for front of house and, uh, backline and a handful of other stuff like in-ear monitors and stuff. But other than that, we rely on the venues that we go to. Uh, most of the venues we were on this tour are theaters. So something similar to the Memorial Center in Red Deer. A lot of just like, you know, community theaters like that. I would like to gossip because I imagine <laughs> uh, on the yes. road, you have a lot of like, or see a lot of weird fan encounters. Tell me about some of them. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely can. <laughs> Great, well thought out question. Tell me gossip. Yes. Please. Do sound guys get groupies too? Uh, I pulled a, I've pulled a few phone numbers <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so far, you know. I do pass, I got a girlfriend and uh, so I do pass them on to the band who are all, you know, in their 50s and just perks them right up. <laughs> good you answer, know? good <laughs> answer. <laughs> Gets them real excited though, you know. Um, yeah, the uh, what can I say? Touring in a bus is not as glamorous as it's made out to be. I can imagine. It is, uh, we're full crew too. There's 12 of us in there, and uh, yeah, the drives are crazy. Usually, you're driving through the night, and it's like you know, it's just like kind of an RV. Like it's bumpy, yeah. it's noisy, and it's uh, a bunch of boys. Yeah, and it's Canada, probably right. Like it's a long ways between. Oh cities. God, yeah, it's the drives. Like the US, are... it's just short from you know city to city as you yeah. go across yeah. the drives are wild yeah matt has a pretty uh just back to your question but like matt has a pretty interesting fan base in the fact that like these people have you know been listening to him for 20 30 years people you know line up in their cars at venues before like six hours before the doors open and as soon as he gets off the bus they'll chase him down to get stuff signed he kind of doesn't like it but that's you know yeah, that's show the responsibility <laughs> of being an artist like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but. Kevin knows what it's like to have to sign autographs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. all the time. <laughs> Just when he's paying for stuff with a check, but still, it counts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, nothing too crazy on this tour. Honestly, it's been pretty tame. Matt's uh, not drinking. A couple of uh, other of. Uh, couple others on the bus are not drinking too so we're kind of just like trying to make the show the best it can be at this point so it probably makes things easier on you like the crew yeah oh for and sure 100 percent every night the yeah. first the first tour we did earlier in the year was one of the most rock and roll things i've ever been a part of in my <laughs> life and uh a lot of things happened that, <laughs> that i can't uh, really That's get fair. too far That's into fair. but uh 
this next or this last tour that we've been doing is uh it's been great it's been really really good and you don't and there's a less than zero percent chance that matt good listens to this podcast so you can be honest but the, and I, I say this <laughs> listen to the same songs day after day week after week like now do you like kind of get sick of hearing like the, the same songs every night does it feel repetitive or do you just kind of tune it out because you actually like have a job i have yeah do? i've got a really cool job in the fact that like every time i'm i do a show i'm constantly trying to make the song sound a little bit better than the day before so it's it's like a never-ending kind of thing that i'm stacking which is cool so no i'm not getting sick of the songs matt's really good about just like dude's catalog is gigantic mm -hmm. so it's like the set list is always changing the usual like uh, old band hits are are always in the set, but uh, it's been really cool. He's told me some stories about like where and how and why he wrote some of the songs, which is like super that crazy is, oh, yeah, to get yeah. in, get into his head a little bit about that stuff. But um, a little bit of a plug from an old '80s band from sorry, a band from the '80s that he's uh, shown me that I've absolutely latched onto is a band called Talk Talk. I don't know if you've oh, ever yeah, heard they, of it. They did the original "It's My Life." Yes, before exactly. Glenn oh. Stefani did yeah. it. Yeah, or um, Mel did it. Yeah, uh, that band's absolutely wild, and yeah. I encourage everybody to go listen to them. It's just like very crazy old music. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah, no, I guess it's probably a lot better than listening to fucking Doug and the Slugs every morning. Like, <laughs> may he rest in peace. But, and Peter doesn't let my boss doesn't listen to this podcast either. So it's fine. whatever I do play solitaire while the songs are <laughs> <laughs> whatever gets you out of bed yeah. in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have to imagine, too, like the crowds make things exciting as well. Like, oh, for sure. Yeah, there's that even if you're going into work being like, oh, OK, I got to do another concert. That has to be fairly infectious. Yeah, the I think the novelty of just touring uh, at a bigger scale is a little bit still new to me. Yeah. So like every single morning I wake up on the bus, I'm just like, oh, fuck, yeah, I get to do this. <laughs> I get to do this again today. Yeah. And, and then I get to go back into my bunk and watch Breaking Bad. And then I get to get up in the morning and do it again. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, it's I'm loving it. I'm having Got the it. best time. Yeah. Is there a like a venue that stood out to you that has had like the best fans or the craziest fans? Uh, maybe not from a fan perspective, but just like the nerdy tech side in me. Uh, we got to do history in Toronto, which is Drake's uh, venue that he built. Absolutely crazy in there. All state of the art, like very futuristic. Like that's like what venues will evolve into maybe in 10, 20 years from now, you know? Cool. Um, that place in the Beanfield Theater in Montreal was another one that's just oh. like stuck with me. Really crazy architecture, but they've just like put a big rock PA in there and they have crazy rock shows. It's really cool. Sweet. What about, and you don't have to mention the, the sp like where it was or the name of the place, but what's the worst, like describe the worst venue that you had to do sound at. Uh, you might have to bleep this and we can continue talking about it because it's like one of my least favorite venues ever mm -hmm. is the guy who owns it's actually a beauty uh, <laughs> and he means very well, but it, uh, that place sucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I've had to take like OBS has played there. Matt's played there. I've been there with the trues. They're just like kind of the only club venue in so they get all the tours, yeah. a lot of the stuff that Bose gets too. And it's just like, when I go in there, it makes me feel really great about Bose because it's just like, this is a comparable venue to what we do. <laughs> and it's not very good. No. Hey, we get, <laughs> well, people, like, they got Bose killer barbecue though. Props, though, too. Like, right? Like the, the, the Spice Girls wannabe, they gave a, a big shout out yeah. to, to Bose too. So maybe, maybe too, you're spoiled because you... Like, obviously, you're a big part of why Bose is always so good. Too, yeah, there's there's a lot of yeah. things going on correctly at Bose, yeah. though. For that place to... Um, I can't even take very much of the credit for how the stage and, and everything else on that end works. Like, it's, it's, it's an anomaly, for sure. Like, I've seen a lot of venues now across the country, and we got, we got something really cool. Yeah. Right here. And I guess going back to the sound tech stuff, because especially for me, like I, I find all that really interesting, but an area people don't really know a lot about. And I wish people would do this like for me. Well, not anymore because I don't do it. But like for wedding DJs, like almost the do's and don'ts and stuff. But people don't under understand too, right? Like exactly what it is you do and how important. Yeah. You are right. And like, like uh, even the crowd can make it hard on you. And obviously bands can make it really hard on you too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, the, the the biggest thing for me every day is to just maintain consistent composure so like <laughs> yeah that's tough. you know if so, exactly yeah it's just if somebody if i walk into a situation where i already can see that things are gonna suck it's just like don't show it on your face yeah. type of thing <laughs> you know it's kind of just deal with it um 
Yeah. Sorry. What, what did you ask me in the first place? I don't think I even actually <laughs> asked that question, but uh, I guess just, yeah, some of the things that like obviously like would make your job. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do definitely get the, uh, I get walked up to and asked if I'm the DJ all the time. Oh, yeah. Mm. So, yeah. And do you ever get like, change the song. I don't like this song. Yeah, I get that all the time. 300 people yeah, are yeah. dancing to it. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely, now that I'm, uh, I've worked with quite a few DJs and uh, learned a little bit about that end of things. Like I'm a month or two away from buying a DJ controller and just learning how to do it, yeah. just for the just for <laughs> the sake it. of it. You get treated like a fucking iPod. I mean, yeah, I'm, sorry, I'm bringing something more to this. This is about you, not me. Uh, <laughs> you have some PTSD from oh, yeah. being a wedding Lots. DJ. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, that's yeah. amazing. But and uh, the other question I, I was thinking of, and it might be hard to pick. So you're obviously a musician and also a sound tech. What was cooler, doing a show? with Matt Good at Bose coming home as a sound tech or playing on stage with one bad son? Oh, they've got, they both have like, uh, the two totally different things, but they're the same thing. Yeah. Um, I still think the coolest and like most self fulfilling thing I've done so far was doing this, the arena in Saskatoon with OBS. We got to headline the arena, uh, when COVID, right when COVID ended in their hometown. So like not my hometown, obviously, but the band's hometown. That's a big and it venue. Was, yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah. 12,000 or so yeah, people. It big. was, yeah. it was a wild, wild thing. That was kind of like a, uh, check mark. Like I played an arena. Not only did we play an arena, but we headlined an arena. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that one's still kind of, the most weight to it, I would say. Okay, is yeah, it wasn't the secret answer C. Yeah, yeah, it was the Saskatoon. Yeah, yeah. So Ryan, who's the who's the coolest person, or I guess the the coolest band, or like anybody you've met while being on the road, either as a musician or as a sound guy? Like, who have you encountered that you were just like, wow, they were they were really cool, or it was really cool to to meet that person or that band? Yeah, I wouldn't say necessarily favorite, but the people that have definitely just like left impressions on me. I was telling Riley this too. I did a festival in Fredericton this summer. It's called Harvest, uh, very end of it. On the plane ride home, some of these names may be just to the common person they may not recognize, but do you know Victor Wooten, bass player? He sat next to me on the airplane and behind me was Feist and okay. four seats ahead of me was all of Broken Social Scene. So it was just like, and I got to meet all of them. Matt introduced me to a couple of them in the lobby of the airport and stuff. And that was just like, that was a cool moment of just like, oh, you're like, you know, you work with these people, you know? I felt the yeah. same when I got to meet Fred Penner for the first time. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Future Islands, got to meet and hang out with and work with all of them when they played at Bose. Um, Rain and Chantel, uh, like Rain uh, Maida from Our Lady Peace yeah. and Chantel Kraviacic, however yeah. you say her last name. I think that was right. That's yeah, close enough. Yeah. She also <laughs> does not listen to this podcast. <laughs> Excellent, <laughs> yeah. It's fine. And if, if you do, Chantel... We're sorry. Close. Come on and correct us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is there anybody you've met that they were just like a complete and total jackass? Uh, we'll say yes, but I won't tell you who. Yeah. All right, fair <laughs> they might listen. <laughs> tell me later. Yeah. Yeah. When you've seen so many amazing shows at Bose and like different things, do you have any that stand out? Like even for, I like I can say uh, maybe Kevin and Aaron will agree with me. Like Stephen Page. Oh my God. At Bose. Yeah, I wasn't like, even, I wasn't even there for that, that show. Oh, no, that Ethan did not. Yeah. yeah, that was like incredible. And that's the yeah. kind of like, but well, is there anything like that that stands out for you? There's a handful of shows. Definitely. I probably have a top three or top five. Uh, both Black Pistol Fire shows absolutely melted my brain. Got to hang out with them. We went to the VAT and jammed after and stuff too. So that was just like a cool, we got to hang out and work with them, whatever else. Uh, Bahamas was, that's top two for sure. Uh, best shows I've seen at Bose. Just like as a guitar player, that was just an absolute guitar playing clinic. Mm. That guy as an artist is just, I find him so intriguing and interesting and an incredible band live. Yeah. Mm. I think those two are the first two that come to my mind. I mean, but... Wannabe's got to be up there. <laughs> oh, yeah, You've yeah. worked with them a lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They're all amazing. I think they might be bringing a band this time. Yeah. Cool. Ooh. I just like have been watching some of their Instagram stories. Oh, cool. Hey, and spoiler the, alert for a little bit later in the show. There yeah, maybe cut, that, yeah. Spice <laughs> maybe cut that out. No, I mean, it's, it's already true. announced. So. Yeah. Yeah, I just have yeah. been seeing some of their Instagram footage and they're playing with a band. The first time they were at Bose, they were with mm -hmm. a band and it was yeah. like... It was wild. It yeah. was really cool. And you've seen them probably more times even than the three of us have seen <laughs> them. But they this like every time it's so good. Oh yeah, it's yeah, they they are great. Yeah. That's great. Funny. And are you are you gonna be there for the Taylor Swift show or are you on the road in a couple weeks? What's on the date the on the fifteenth? I'm gone for oh. that. Yeah. 
<laughs> Good. Let's yeah, move I'm going for that. that one better, I think. <laughs> I'm going out actually with a, uh, a country band. A couple of the members are from Red Deer. They're called the Prairie States. Uh, cool. They're great. We're going out and supporting the Washboard Union for a week and a half. Oh, that's fun. Cool. So, yeah. Just a cool guy doing cool guy yeah. shit. Yeah. It's just, just work now, you know? <laughs> it's just cool work, yeah. So, Ryan, I have, I have another question about just general Canadian musicians. So, mm-hmm. <clears throat> I've, musicians a lot of time are the big bands, obviously. I think a lot of people just assume that they make crazy money and they're all super wealthy. And that's like maybe more of the mainstream guys that are getting played on the radio and whatever. But so, like a, a Canadian musician, are these guys or are, are the bigger ones, are they earning a good living? Like, I'm assuming they're not l- kind of earning anything even close to what some of these huge touring bands are. But, like, can you earn a decent living as a touring musician in Canada? Oh, yeah. You can. I would say it's harder to, like, break out and build a fan base and do everything from scratch nowadays. But the bands that had radio support and success in the early 2000s and, like, when radio was still part of the ecosystem of shows and everything... Those guys are still, yeah, they're not, you know, making millions, but they're living pretty good, you know? Yeah. So it is possible. Um, just the climate of the music industry is, depends who you ask, but it's just a mess out there, you know? Well, and is that, so is that record labels taking the majority of the income or like, how does that? Yeah, it's a little bit of like, we just don't sell records anymore. So like right. there's, this goes a little bit deeper too. I have an opinion of just like why songwriting is kind of getting watered down a little bit because there's no like there's no big big incentive to write really good records anymore because you don't make you know if you wrote a really really good record and you took it to a label and got it distributed you could make a million bucks even if you only made a dollar and sold a million records mm-hmm. so right. like that whole incentive of like we're going to go out and sell units even though the label will take a bunch you'll still not we still don't have anything to sell anymore other than t-shirts. So the, the so, money now is in touring, I would assume, like you're getting paid. Yeah, for money's shows. In, in touring and in merch, which is t-shirts and whatever else. Right. But that big piece, physical copy of a CD or something, that was a, a huge part of just the financing of everything in the industry. That doesn't exist anymore. Oh. So yes, tickets are going up in price and Ticketmaster's all scumbags and they're kind of <laughs> doing it. But like, that's kind of just like, to have these machines operate at that level, you kind of have to have ex- more expensive tour, and so tour dates like, and tickets and stuff. Like Spotify, obviously, is a big issue there. Like you hear a lot of artists are complaining about Spotify, and you know, you yeah, get a you just like you don't like get cents. You get paid so little that no one even really counts it as. We don't really measure it as income anymore, right? Well, unless you're at like you know, it's literal pennies, half yeah. pennies on so, the dollar. So listens they used just to turn into probably like butts and seats right that's exactly yeah. Theory, yeah that's the way you would like it to yeah. you would like to think that but why don't you just write like 30 of the same sad girl songs release a double album and make a billion dollars that seems to be working <laughs> a lot of artists and did that back in the day yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Per- yeah sorry i'm i'm also i'm bringing something personal to, to that too because i don't think that's a very good album but anyways <laughs> uh, <laughs> not- <laughs> later Love in the show it. we'll talk about ted's personal issues yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have time for that it's supposed to be a Don't we do that every day. show? Yeah. <laughs> this is just Ted's therapy? Is that what this is? Yeah, it ain't working. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the, uh, going back to, to touring with Matt Good, I know you, you told me you do have a couple stories you can tell. Like, I know you you said you guys kind of fucked up a ferry ride for everyone. Oh, yeah. that was a That's a good one. That's a good messed up collective story that happened to us. <laughs> uh, so, we uh, last tour, we made it out to, where did we go? Victoria. Campbell River made it out to the uh, island, which is like kind of tricky to do in a bus and a trailer just because of, mm-hmm. you know, getting a bus on the ferry, blah, 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 getting across costs, whatever. As we were leaving the ferry to come back into Vancouver, we actually broke down on the ramp of the ferry. Um, uh, bus wouldn't start. We, lo- lo- we ran out of air in the air brake system. So then the brakes locked up. Oh my so we couldn't get towed off. And we put the whole ferry schedule for the day behind probably an hour and a half. Like we were all joking that we were going to end up on the news or something because we. Having taken that ferry this summer and waited for hours to get on one, I would have murdered all of you. Yeah. Maybe it was yeah, the same it was. Time. <laughs> Maybe Aaron was there. He almost got murdered. We eventually did. A mechanic came and uh, changed the fuel filter or something and we eventually got it going. But uh, oh. that was like, uh, we thought we were going to miss the show. It was the last show of the tour or two at the Commodore. 
And, and like, you that's, almost got murdered. A hundred percent. Yeah, there was some very, very angry people yeah. with us. But, I don't but. care if you're Matt Good. No, <laughs> that ferry ride is. Yeah, ugh. yeah. Yeah, it's not like they have the names. You never know who's in a bus anyways. It's not like your name's plastered on the side of it. So um, That's a good reason not to have it on there, I guess. Right. Big time, <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think. Give me a second to cultivate some good ones. Was it the plays bus that like emptied out their... No, that was Dave, Dave Matthews. Dave Matthews. Yeah, Dave Matthews yes. Oh. And uh, from like having pulled over on the side of the highway in the middle of the night and emptied the, the tank... That's a real thing, and I understand how that could have happened, and that is so messed up that that happened. Do you ever pull up to, like, a full-service gas station and, like, have the bus driver say, hey, load me up? <laughs> no, but uh, you can use that, that joke, if you That want. joke definitely gets thrown around all the time. Does it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. A lot of tour buses have a no pooping rule. That's big time true. Is, yep. it, is it like brown for a brown? Hundred bucks if you want to go number two on the bus? Uh, or do you have to poop in a bag? I've that's heard, what you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's what you have to do. Yeah. Is that okay? Thank you, Tana Mosho, for teaching me about tour bus. Etiquette. That's that's a real oh, thing. Yeah. yeah. See, um, and everyone said, "Oh, that's going to stay on the rails." With Lund not here tonight, you already got to talk about poop. We're not even halfway through. Like hey, I why, said, why do you have to poop in a bag? Like they have septic systems in them. But it's like. Yeah, no. Just lingers? Yeah, I, I don't actually smell. know for sure 100% the reason behind it, but I would just guess that it's like you'd never get that tank clean enough to not smell. Yeah. Is this? Is it an old bus? Not, it doesn't not particularly. It carpeted walls too, which yeah. is like that just, that just hangs. Like the bus we had the last year had carpeted walls, yeah. yeah, and Matt was smoking in the back the whole time. It was wild. <laughs> Needless to say, we did not get that bus the second time. <laughs> As a guy who owned an RV who and with a bunch of kids who like to poop, yeah, I just that boggles my mind. We yeah. never ever had an issue. No smell, nothing. That yeah, I don't know. I wonder if it's just a different type of septic system in one of those or something, and it's or if not it's just like you just don't do it. Yeah, yeah it's. Just, I also wouldn't want like don't really want to if I don't have to. Like that's my time. It's so stressful on a bus, and you're like hanging on and but more stressful in the everywhere. middle of the night to have to go up to the bus driver and be like, "Sir, you need to find the nearest gas station." Oh, oh that's and happening. Then, or the closest yeah. bag. Yeah, mm -hmm. or that. And then you have to say, sir, I need you to pull over. I have a bag of poop. Wouldn't the bag smell worse? <laughs> but you get, you get, if you get rid of it. If you get rid of it, you ruin this whole interview. Are we, are but... we doing this? Are we really doing this right now? Okay, so I, let's take this conversation. So forget about the music industry. Over. If you had a girl who was half horse, half human. <laughs> Where does she poop from? <laughs> That's a hell of a question, man. <laughs> Would it be human poops or horse poops? <laughs> that requires a lot of thought. Yeah. And, and Aaron's gone. <laughs> oh, amazing. Honestly, a great question. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, well, we'll start. To, oh, boy, wrap things up here. But uh, it is, it's really exciting to have you back here. Like I said, it has been a long time since both you and Riley have been here. And I know you you. Don't want you to say a lot, so you can really just make this a yes or no question. But as far as Communal Creative Studios goes, uh, maybe like some new exciting things coming up in the future. We've got some very exciting news. Not ready to share it all, but uh, yeah, things are growing, moving upwards. You're so. bringing in a real podcast that uh, people listen to. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not get crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, Ryan, we'll let you get back to uh, making your playing your baby making music. And, oh, uh, thanks. Full, usually, like we give Riley a lot of shit for making noise <laughs> when we're trying to record, but if you, if like we, we don't mind a little bit of background noise. I actually have. I'm going to Chicago in a week and a half with this metal band from Red Deer that I uh, should be practicing those songs to go record. So I was going to maybe I'll sound like metal. metal maybe I'll bombard yeah. you with some <laughs> wild tunes from from the other side of the wall. Well, uh, thanks for talking to us about pooping in a bag. We really appreciate it. <laughs> that is this is that is the most your whole career yeah. built up to this moment. Yeah, I'm that's the most important piece of tour bus information you can get, basically. <laughs> so that's how you be rock and roll. Okay, no. <laughs> uh, but Ryan, again, thanks so much for coming on here. I know this is uh, not necessarily your jam, but uh, like I said, it's it's fun to have you back here, and uh, congratulations too on all the success and oh, cool thanks, guy buddy. shit that you've yeah. been doing. I can't wait. Appreciate uh, to it to see. I love following along and seeing all the cool guy shit you've been doing <laughs> appreciate it man thanks for having me oh dear